that all men have inalienable rights to think freely, to talk freely, to write freely their own opinions, and to counter or utter or write upon the opinions of others. This is from the Creed of the Church of Scientology. Hey everybody, I'm Holly, aka the Scientology Geek, and welcome to episode 22 of Going Over the Student Hat series. Uh, this is going to be another boring one. We're literally learning how to use a reel-to-reel -reel tape player. Um, I'm not going to be giving my whole recap in the outro because it's all pretty much self-explained. And besides, it's outdated technology we don't use anymore, so I'm not really going to give a shit about mentioning it. Um, if you guys like what I do, feel free to hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, make sure my videos are getting to you. Do whatever you got to do to boost engagement with this whole YouTube algorithm. Um, I'm not too concerned about the views as much as I sometimes sound like it. Uh, it just, it does, it kind of sucks, I'll admit, when I look at a video and see that it's very popular, and then the next video, which happens to be a student hat, usually, ends up getting anywhere between 10 and 20 views. Um, but you know what? Whatever, for you 10 to 20 people that watched it, thank you. Thank you for watching this. Uh, however long you stayed, I'm glad you clicked on to begin with. Without any further ado, let's get started. This is the HCO Bulletin of 5 December 1981, revised 7 October 1984. This is the tape course series number 7R, setting up and using a reel-to-reel -reel tape player. And yes, I'm actually going to be reading this. It references the policy letter, audience alertness, and tape players. Years ago, I found that student comprehension and tape playing quality went hand in hand. I made some experiments with this, and I found that on bad quality equipment, most of the students went to sleep. But as the quality of the equipment improved, their comprehension also improved. No fucking shit. And that's why you get the clear sound listening system. To make sure to get the, the knowledge of source to you. And that students got the best grades on high quality equipment. The tape player must be of high quality to reproduce the sound without adding to or distorting what is on the tape. Poor quality sound is difficult and annoying to listen to, and causes misunderstoods by preventing the listener from hearing exactly what is said. The poorer the equipment, the poorer the comprehension. The better the equipment, the better the comprehension. This also applies to the headphones. Horse tapes must always be listened to through high-quality, high-fidelity headphones. This permits the listener to be undisturbed by other noises in the area, as well as prevents others from being disturbed by the tape being played. High fidelity headphones permit the listener to have his undivided attention on the tape and produce a pleasant and easy to listen to sound which closely duplicates what is spoken on the tape. This does not in any way replace misunderstood word tech, nor does it change or add to the three barriers to study. See the HCOB called barriers to study. As the tech for handling student difficulties on tapes. If a student dopes off on a tape or doesn't understand, find the misunderstood word and get it cleared. Don't buy well, the equipment is bad, so of course he's doping off. Get the student handled with standard study tech, and then ask, why was this student permitted to listen on poor equipment in the first place? The tape player controls. In an academy, you may find both tape players and tape recorders. A tape recorder is a machine that records sound onto tape and also can play back the sound. A tape player is a machine that only plays back the sound that is already recorded on tape. Tape recorders should, in effect, be converted to tape players by having the record button removed or sealed up so it cannot be used. It will erase the tape and lose the valuable materials on the tape if pushed accidentally by the student. Tape recorders and tape players come in many makes and models. The controls and switches are arranged in various places, and the machines are of various styles. Following is a description of the basic controls of a tape player. The arrangement of these controls will vary from machine to machine, but their functions will be the same on most machines. Number one, an on-off switch or power switch. Number two, volume control, often in combination with the on or off switch. Three, tone control omitted on some machines. The tape controls of a tape player are usually in the form of a switch, which is turned to various positions or in the form of a series of buttons. Buttons like pause, fast forward, rewind, stop, and play. Number four, play, sometimes called forward. Press this button or turn the switch to this position to play the tape. Fast forward, rapidly runs the tape forward without playing the tape. Number six, rewind, rapidly runs the tape back without playing the tape. Number seven, stop, stops the tape. Always stop the tape before fast forwarding or rewinding the tape. 
also bringing tape to a complete stop after fast forwarding or rewinding the tape before playing the tape. Number eight, pause, used to temporarily pause a tape that is being played. On a machine with a pause button, press the pause button to hold the tape, press the button again to release it. On a machine that has a switch with a pause position, turn the switch to the pause position to pause the tape, then back to play to play the tape. Number nine, foot pedal. This is exactly the same as the pause button in function, except that it is operated by the foot. Academy tape players must have a foot pedal so the student can have his hands free to look up words, take notes, demonstrate something with his demo kit, etc. Most tape players do not have foot pedals, but they can and should be installed on tape machines that don't already have them. Caution. If you are using a tape recorder that has a record button, never press this button as it will erase the section of tape being played while the record button is pressed. The record button is used when recording something onto a tape, but when it is used with a pre-recorded tape, it will also erase any section of the tape that is played. The record button is usually red. Setting up the tape player. Number one, the tape player is set on a steady bench, table, or platform at a comfortable height so the student can easily operate the controls, take notes, etc. Holy fuck! Dictionaries. Tapes. Like, learning how to use it each to such a fine degree. Hubbard, you don't need to go into all this. It's so fucking boring. And I hate it. Number two, the tape player should be set up so that the student is facing the course supervisor rather than having his back to the supervisor. This enables the supervisor to see how the student is doing, and he can easily spot if the student has gone dull or sleepy from a misunderstood word. The tape machine is plugged in and switched on to check if the power is on and that the machine is operating. 4. Plug in the headphones. 5. Plug in the foot pedal and position it on the floor so that it can be comfortably reached by the foot. Number 6. The tape is put on the tape player and the colored leader is threaded around the tape guides and playing head and in between the capstan and rubber pinch roller as shown in the following diagram. Be sure not to twist the tape as it is threaded past the head and guides. The tape should come off the reel flat and lie flat against the guides and should go onto the empty reel without a single twist. Number seven, set the speed at which the tape will be played at the correct speed for the tape. The usual speeds for a tape player are seven and a half, three and three quarters, or one and seven eighths inches per second, or their equivalent, 19, 9.5, or 4.8 centimeters per second. Most of the tapes you will play are played at three and three quarter inches per second, or 9.5 centimeters. Number eight, run the tape to the beginning of the lecture and set the tape counter at zero, unless your machine is not equipped for the tape counter. Number nine, play the tape. Adjust the volume and tone controls as needed while playing the tape. Bad tone settings can cause students to go by words they don't understand, and so dope off while listening to the tape. Points on the use of the tape player. A. To rewind a tape or to fast forward it, always press the stop button first. And after rewinding the tape or fast forwarding it, press the stop button and wait for the tape to stop before pressing the play button. Suddenly jerking the tape forward or back can cause it to break or stretch, or the tape can even come off the reel and get caught in between the side of the reel and the wound tape. B. The magnets inside headphones can erase part or all of a tape, so never leave headphones lying near a tape. C. Keep dirt and dust away from the tape machine and when not in use, replace the cover on the tape machine. D. Handle the tape gently. Don't do anything that would cause it to become stretched, tangled, or broken. Be sure to place the tape in its correct box when done and don't permit loose ends to protrude from the tape box. E. Don't leave long loose ends sticking out from a reel when playing a tape. These could get caught in the machine. F, after the tape has been played, store it in its box without rewinding it. Rewinding the tape serves no purpose, and fast winding causes the tape to be wound rather sloppily. This can cause the tape to distort. Tapes store better and last longer when wound at playing speed. G, never put a piece of paper or anything else into the tape to register your place. Use the tape counter to find your place. Always switch the tape player off when not in use, even on short breaks. This lets the machine cool off and helps to prevent it from overheating. I, at the first sign of any fault with the tape player or the tape, report it to the course admin or your supervisor. J, never twist or knot the headphone cord as this may lead to inner wire breakage. K, if a word or phrase cannot be discerned, call the supervisor or check a good transcript if one is available. You must look up any misunderstood words in a dictionary. L, if the sound becomes blurred or of poor quality, Ask the course admin to clean the playing head across which the tape moves. The playing head must be cleaned regularly as it picks up some of the coating from the tape, which results in a blurred, poor quality sound. M. If you cannot clearly hear the tape or the quality of the recording is poor, tell the course admin or your supervisor. 
The playing head may need to be cleaned or the tape player may need to be demagnetized. You may also have a bad tape. Don't jeopardize your comprehension of the materials by listening to a lecture through poor equipment. Get it handled or switch to a better machine. And consult the instruction book or manual if you need additional information on the particular tape player or tape recorder that you are using. If a student has trouble running the tape player or has difficulty with it, he should be run on reach and withdraw on the tape player by another student as a drill for HCLB reach and withdraw. Now, that's an assist from my uh, assist manual, whatever you want to call it, my just big compilation of assists. You should also be word cleared on this HCLB and also the tape player manual if needed. Tape courses. Tape courses are courses that are taught in languages other than English where the materials have been translated and recorded on tape. One, mark the tape counter reading of each item on the check sheet as you come to that item on the tape. This gives you a reference by which you can find any item later on. If a word or phrase cannot be discerned, the student should call the supervisor. The supervisor listens to the tape, and if he can't distinguish what is being said, he gets hold of the English text and locates the word or phrase, and using a good foreign language dictionary, translates the word or phrase for the student. It is the responsibility of the supervisor to see that any misunderstood word is cleared up. Three, if a student balks or can't understand something on a translated tape, he is first word cleared. If the confusion does not resolve, the translated tape is compared to the English material, and if found to be a translation error, the supervisor or word clearer makes a note of the translation error by tape. If the confusion does not resolve, the translated tape is compared to the English material, and if found to be a translation error, the supervisor or word clearer makes a note of the translation error by entering it on a card, which is then kept in the tape box for that tape. He also sends a report to the nearest Continental Translations Unit. The vast majority of the technology of Dianetics and Scientology is recorded on tape. Use good equipment and use it properly so that you can hear these materials in their utmost clarity. Like I said, I'm not recapping any of this. Um, if you want access to this documentation, the flag orders, base orders, policy letters, technical bulletins, any of the other stuff I have in the Google Drive folder, feel free to email me at scientologeek at gmail.com. That's going to be down in the description with the link to my Discord server as well. So feel free to join up there, say hi, or if you want access to the drive, send me a valid Gmail address so I can then invite you. I'll talk to all of you later. See ya.